Tony Evers is the governor of Wisconsin. Uh, he has gone to great lengths to make sure that certain things are done on behalf of working people, even though it is a red legislature, but he has veto power and he uses it. And so in this case, he is using a partial veto to fund public schools for four centuries. I'd say that that's pretty damn impressive. What do you think? Uh, look, anytime we see, some, it doesn't surprise me that it's somebody, it's Wisconsin, so it doesn't surprise me. They're, you know, they do a lot of things in the correct direction there. Um, I'm glad to see that there's some executive in some office somewhere that's actually taking the initiative to do what they can to protect their people. That's it. That's all we're talking about. And the fact that we have to be singing praises to this because it's such an anomaly is just really pathetic. It shouldn't have to be this way, but unfortunately, that is the hand that we have been dealt. On Wednesday, Governor Tony Evers continued a time-honored tradition in Wisconsin politics, using a quirky Badger State governing tool to infuriate the opposing party. When approving the state's biennial budget, Evers exercised Wisconsin's unique, expansive partial veto which allows the governor to surgically remove words, phrases, and individual numbers or letters for appropriations bills when signing them into law. Among other changes, Evers removed a Republican-authored provision that he denounced as a cuts benefiting the wealthiest individuals in our state, noting that roughly one half of their proposed tax cut would go to filers with incomes over 200,000 in a state like Wisconsin, comparative to a state like Florida that may be the equivalent to 300, 350,000, it's a lot of money. He also struck the zero in 10 million to slash a piece of funding for the upcoming RNC convention, which apparently is taking place in the state of Wisconsin. Evers also uses veto pen to lock in funding for Wisconsin public school system for four centuries, changing the phrase 2023-24 school year and the 2024-25 school year to the 2023, to the 24, 25 school years. Uh, that's pretty impressive, I, I have to say. Uh, so let's uh, let's play a little bit of this video and we'll see what they have to say. Uh, Jen, your thoughts before we play. No, I want to see the clip because I, I'm really like fascinated that there's actually states where their executives are trying to help people. Like the whole concept is fascinating to me. We don't have that here. That's for sure. Now to the results of two high stakes elections sending political shockwaves across the country. A Democratic judge in Wisconsin has won a crucial Supreme Court seat, flipping control of the state's highest court. And a progressive candidate has claimed victory in Chicago's mayoral runoff. Senior White House correspondent Mary Bruce has the latest. Hey, Mary. I think this may I, I think this may be um, for some reason a, an older clip that they're playing, even though this that's is old. Today. I was going to say that's old news. That's not correct. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm like, why are we? We know this. All right, let me let me see if there's another article that has a clip of the information pertaining to this. Um, well, just did it not say it in the article? I mean, no, it did. But you know, obviously, I'm just going off of what's uh, being announced here. So I think a lot of this is just rehashing old, uh, you know, specifics. Maybe there really isn't a clip uh, pertaining to it at the moment, at least not that I can see. So right now, um, it would appear that that is the case. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, Governor Evers was able to win re-election by slim margins uh, this will help him next time. No. It will. And it's unfortunate that Mandela Barnes uh, was not able to get through on the Senate uh, and we're still stuck with Ron Johnson, which sucks. But somebody like Tony Evers, if he was to run for president, he would be a viable candidate. Yeah. See, he now when he turns out, he'll have this to stand on. I mean, it's definitely I, good for his record. I agree. I, I think that there is a lot to be said for you know, doing what's right on behalf of working people. There's no question at the state level, it's much different. And that's where having a viable competitive legislature really does make a difference. One of the problems that we have here in Florida is we do not have a competitive state legislature. The GOP just does whatever it wants. 
but yeah. a little bit too much of anything is not good. That's why competition is important. You see what happens when you don't have it in the state of Florida in a completely super majority red legislature. And then you see what happens in other states like California with a super blue legislature. And you see the negative effects there. The only state that seems to potentially have it at a high level would be the state of New York, which they're attempting to push through universal health care, the New York Health Act, still a main topic of discussion. But we know that the people who are standing in the way of that becoming a law is the Democratic Party, not the Republican Party. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.